Hi, uh, today I just want to do a quick tutorial setup for a wall clock. This is a vintage German made wall clock with Westminster chimes. Um, so we're just going to go over uh, briefly how to set it up and of course uh, if you have questions about it we're always available to answer any questions by phone or email. Um, so to start with uh, the clock when you receive it will not have the pendulum on it. So we're going to take this off of here. There we go. So when you receive the clock, it won't have the pendulum on it. Um, and of course, you're going to have to hang it on the wall and uh, set it up level. So, so first thing is the screw that holds the clock at the top has to be the type of screw that's going to hold the clock straight to the wall. So the clock should never be allowed to lean forward on the wall. It has to be plumb and level on the wall this way. The clock also has to be leveled from side to side and secured at the bottom somehow. So leveling it from side to side is simply done with a level on the inside here on this clock. And then you'll notice on this clock that it has a hole in the back of, to secure the clock to the wall. And that's very, very important that you do that because you don't want the clock moving around every time you open up the door. And of course, any vibrations or any changes in the, uh, the angle of the clock or, or, you know, will, will change how the clock works. So level it. Make sure it's flush to the wall, level it, and then lock it in place with the screw at the back. Once the clock is up and locked in place, then you can hang the pendulum on it and get it wound up. So hanging the pendulum on this one's a little bit tricky. There we go. A lot of times you just have to do it by feel, but uh, sometimes you can get underneath it enough to have a flashlight up there and see what you're doing. So once the clock is, is hung and... Uh, and the pendulum is hung on the clock, then it's just a matter of giving it a, a light touch to get it going. Make sure that you listen to it and hear it ticking properly. Uh, you should be able to hear it doing a nice even tick, tick, tick. So if you have, as long as you haven't disturbed how that pendulum hangs, um, then the clock should be ticking nice and evenly at this point. If uh, the clock is not ticking evenly and you have it level and you have it secured, then you do have to make some adjustments on the clock to make it tick evenly. And the way you do that is simply by holding the pendulum steady at the bottom and pushing up near where the pendulum attaches to the clock, either one way or another to change the way the clock sounds, to change the ticking on. That's something we'll save for another tutorial. So for now, we're just going to assume that you didn't, you didn't make any changes, didn't do it, didn't disturb the swing of the pendulum, didn't disturb the uh, leader for the pendulum. And everything is nice and, and straightforward. The next part is winding the clock. Uh, winding the clock has to be done at least once a week. You can wind it as often as you like, but at the very minimum, you need to wind the clock once a week. Uh, winding it should be done on all three uh, springs, and it has to be done until the clock is, each one has to be done until they're absolutely fully wound. There's no such thing as overwinding a clock, there's no such thing as winding it too tight. So on this one, we do all three of them. Until they come to a stop and you'll know when it comes to a stop because you just won't be able to go any further. And you can see I can put enough pressure on it to actually make the key rebound. There's nothing going to damage inside the clock. There's nothing going to hurt by winding it up. The concept of overwinding or winding a clock too tight is simply a misconception that was probably perpetrated by some watchmaker who didn't know what he was doing. And so he blamed the customer for not being able to repair their clock or their watch and told them that they had overwound it. So make sure it's fully wound on all three of them. Once the clock is wound, then you can set it on the proper time. With this vintage type of a vintage clock, uh, of a wall clock, German-made wall clock, um, I don't recommend turning the hands backwards past the points where it chimes. So in this case, the clock chimes every 15 minutes. So I would say do not go back past the, the quarters on this clock when you turn the hands. You can turn the hands backwards inside of the quarters. Uh, as long as, you know, if you need to adjust it by a couple of minutes. If you're adjusting it over a longer period of time, then you do have to go forwards. Um, what I recommend with this clock, again, is just letting it chime and letting it do its thing. 
until you get it to the right time. So over the course of a week, this clock may gain or lose approximately seven minutes to seven to 10 minutes a week. Um, accuracy on these clocks from the factory were designed to be roughly a minute a day, plus or minus. So you can't expect that there's not going to be as accurate as, um, as a quartz clock or, or a battery operated clock. Uh, so you will have to reset it whenever you wind it. So part of the routine should be wind it once a week and reset it on the proper time. And again, setting it just simply a matter, again, if it's a few minutes fast during the week, you can go backwards in here, but don't go back past the 12, the 9, the 6, or the 3. Uh, and as far as uh, once the clock is up and running and you wind it regularly, uh, if the clock is outside of that regular, or outside of the parameters of a minute a day, then um, the adjustment that has to be made is here at the bottom of the pendulum. Uh, but that's something that we do when we service all of our clocks. So it's something you should never have to worry about. Basically, it's just a matter of raising the pendulum bob to make the clock run faster and lowering it to make it run slower. Uh, but 